Welcome back to the broadcast. Let's take a look at what's happening in the world of business. Transit time when moving goods from the port of Mombasa to neighboring countries is one of the challenges due to the many stopovers, collision and cargo diversion. Now to eliminate this, Kenya, Uganda and Rwanda have rolled out a regional electronic cargo tracking system to reduce the cost of trade across the three countries. KTN's Joy Doreen Bira was at the monitoring center and now shows us how it works. Transit cargo forms 40% of the total cargo at the port of Mombasa, meaning there are increased volumes of goods moving out of the port to various destinations outside of Kenya. However, the clearance duration has not been as fast and sometimes cargo in transit has gone missing after certain high-risk hotspots. It used to take about 5.92 days for cargo to get to its destination outside of Kenya, but now this system is helping cut that to three days. It's a joint program between the Kenya government, Uganda, and Rwanda. We'll see a reduction in the corruption in terms of diversion of cargo, and there'll be an improvement in the cargo security. The tax body has flagged off equipment to aid the five different rapid response units in Kenya and 2,000 police officers deployed along transit routes that will deal quickly with alerts from the monitoring center. We am in Mombasa. And that seal is picked across all the platforms, and the tracking st starts from there. For us, that seal or that transaction is released when the revenue authority in the country where that cargo is headed has disarmed and confirmed that the cargo has arrived. This system, it is hoped, will facilitate trade along the Northern Corridor, cab theft, and reduce dwell times at the borders and port gates. Uh, the yellow track here is actually going to Uganda, and then the blue ones are headed to Rwanda. And so they're able to even identify the plate numbers for some of the trucks. For example, uh, this one right here, you're able to see all the details uh, pertaining to this blue truck that's headed to Rwanda, for instance, the, the date and time uh, that it left Mombasa, and also what estimated time it's going to have to take to get to where it's going. You're able to see the number plate and also the speed that the truck is driving at. And so this is expected to cut down on transit time, but also minimize risk uh, among other benefits of the regional electronic cargo tracking system. Joy Doreen Bira, KTN News. Thank you, Joy Doreen. Environmentalists in Watamu have set up an eco-world demonstrating center to promote conversation around the recycling of plastics and solid waste materials that are a major threat to the environment. Now, the center founded by the Watamu Marine Association is being used as a community enterprise which turns waste into useful products that can be sold in any part of the world. EcoWorld was first formed in the year 2009 by like-minded environmentalists and community members who were against the spread of marine debris and plastic wastes along the Watamu Beach area of the Indian Ocean coast, one of Kenya's renowned tourism destinations. The first one is the Basu Kijengane. Justin Kitsao is the chairman of the Watamu Marine Association. He takes us through the association's center. EcoWorld formed the Blue Team a group comprising of volunteers who began by collecting wastes and recycling it for sale. They are crashed into small ships and that end result is packed and sold in industries in Mombasa or Nairobi. Nothing is thrown away. All the wastes have a big role to play to produce something useful. We have community artists who normally use the plastic, especially the rubber plastic. We normally call these flip-flops. They make Beautiful product. The experts use technology to make a biodigester, which produces methane gas for cooking and lighting. We normally we recycle organic waste coming from vegetable peels and also cow dung. And the end result is a methane gas, which one of our community members who is around here and we are, is using that. For cooking. Apart from the gas, the conservationists use the recycled waste to get liquid fertilizer for crop production. Their environmental activities come at a time when the Indian Ocean is under threat due to marine debris and plastic waste that is endangering the lives of sea mammals. The beaches are clean as a result of that. And on the other side of conservation, we have been saving 
lives, in terms of the wildlife that we're having on the beaches. The Eco World Enterprise Center is a showroom consisting of products made of plastic waste which was built partly by using the waste materials. Inside the house are hundreds of products made from waste material, some of which have been sold in hotels and abroad fetching premium prices. In waste management we have reusing, reducing and recycling. So in here we have uh, designed a sketch. This is also a message of awareness to our community and the general public in terms of how we can use these wine, wine bottles to to give message to our community. So this is a nearly five meter long dolphin constructed by nearly 1,000 wine bottles just to show how we can minimize waste and how we can use, use waste and give out a message for many of our community members and even tourists to conserve for the future of our... Empty wine bottles were used to set up a section of the walls and instead of using tiles for the floor, it has been done using the bottom part of wine bottles with different colors. 6,000 wine and plastic bottles went into building this house. So it's directly linked. We are doing conservation of our beautiful environment, but it's also the same area for tourism. And that, you know, with the community, it is a circle. This center is the first of its kind in Africa and shall act as a center of excellence for learning and research. Peter Kaba, KTN News. Take you to Western Kenya now, a day after the announcement of gold discovery by mining firm Acacia. Residents already experiencing joyous employment soon awaits most of them. Timothy Mukoshi has been digging for gold for decades and the discovery of high-grade gold has revived the dream of better lifestyle. He's optimistic over new opportunities once mining commences after the collapse of the gold mining in the area. Many villagers and artisans will get employment and the economy of Kakamega County will spar. He further urged the government to cushion the local miners from brokers who exploit them through price fixing. Average, she motum zuri, na penya kazi na enda bila kusumbua in a week. An individual, mtu tu mwenye anafamu kazi vizuri ya naweza earn not less than 15,000 in a week. Tungependa, tupate pay kamiri ya iwe stand by. Na tena tupate, tupate duwa nunusu wao, nunusu hao, nunusu mmoja ambayo tunesa pitakea hiyo mali. That's the latest from the world of business now. Your top in, our, in, in the lead with Dennis Onserego tonight, we did ask you, do you think the conflict in the Rift Valley and parts of northern Kenya will escalate during the election period? Let's take a look at some of your views very quickly. Moha Morgeni on Twitter says, yes, the conflict will escalate in the August polls. Remember, two aspirants were killed in Baringo. Joe Madai says, giving a rule of shoot to kill is worsening the situation that is there now in the Rift Valley. Let something be done. Finally, one here from uh, Ochi Alexander Twitter says, no, the road sleeves by the executive ought to bear foot sooner rather than later. Many thanks for watching. That is all from me this being Wednesday night, but don't go too far. Sophia Onuna is coming up next with the latest from the world sport for all of us here at KTN News. I'm Ben Kitil. Thanks for watching.